All right, tea time. Ah, nice. You know what? I just realized. I'm gonna show you how to complete the square using this toast. Let's go. Before I use this piece of toast to show you how to complete the square, let's start off with an equation. So suppose we had the equation x squared plus 6x minus 1 equals to 0. This is a quadratic equation. What I want you to do is see if you can use the product sum to factorize this expression or this equation as x with a term here and then x with a term here. So you may want to use the product sum method to find two factors that multiply to give you minus one and then those two factors add to give you um, plus six which is a coefficient of x. Think about it. You cannot, there are no integer solutions to solve this quadratic equation. So what we need to do is we need to learn a new technique which is completing the square. Okay, so let's write our expression x squared plus 6x minus 1 equals 0. The first thing I want to do is I want to move my constant term to the right hand side. So I'm going to take it over here, I'm going to plus 1 here and I'm going to plus 1 here. That allows me to cancel this out and I can rewrite this equation by x squared plus 6x is equal to 1. And what I want to do is I want to find out what this term is here so I can write this as a perfect square. Now, let's start this off. There's my piece of toast and what that represents is x by x, which is x squared. So since I have x times x, I have x squared. And here is my 6x, so that term represents 6x. Now, what I want to do is I want to split this 6x into two parts. I'm going to split it directly in the middle, right through the center. I'm going to split it into two halves. So, if I split that, from 6x I end up getting 3x and 3x. Just like this term was x times x, which gives me x squared, this piece of toast must have a length of 3 times x, and this piece of toast must also have a length of 3 times x, which gives me an area of 3x, 3x, and x squared. So what I can do is I can take this piece of toast and join it here, and I can take this piece of toast and join it here, and so what I have is I have x, which follows through to this side. That means that this must be 3. And I've got x that follows through down to this side, which means that this must be 3. And I've got this piece that's left over to complete my square. Now this represents the part that I need to make this a perfect square. To make this quadratic a perfect square, I need to figure out what this is. Now pause the video and comment in the section below if you know what this term is. So this length here is the same as this length here, which is 3, and this length at the bottom is the same as the length at the top, which is also 3. So 3 times 3 makes 9. That's my piece of toast that's missing to complete the square, which has an area of 9, 3 by 3. So here I need to include 9. Now, remember, if I add anything to the left-hand side, I must add it to the right-hand side, so I need to also add here 9. x squared plus 6x plus 9 is actually a perfect square. So if you look at this piece of toast, which is a perfect square, we have x squared plus 3x plus 3x plus 9, we can simplify that to x squared plus 6x plus 9. What is this? This is the area of the toast or this perfect square. An area is length times width. So if we look at the length at the top, we have x plus 3. So that's x plus 3. And that's going to be multiplied by the width. And if we look at the width, we've got x plus 3. So x plus 3 times x plus 3 is actually x plus 3 all squared. So therefore we can see that x squared plus 6x plus 9 is equal to x plus 3 all squared. This is my quadratic and this is my factored form. 
they both equal to the area of this perfect square. So what we need to do is solve this quadratic to find the real solutions. Okay, to recap, we had x squared plus 6x plus 9 was equal to 1 plus the 9. And this was my perfect square. So x squared plus 6 squared plus 3 squared, that can be written as x plus 3, x plus 3, all squared is equal to 1 plus 9 is 10. So we're now going to solve this quadratic. Now to start this off, I'm going to take the square and I'm going to do the square root of both sides. Remember, whenever you do the square root of any number, there are two values, plus and a minus. So there's two solutions, positive square root of 10 and negative square root of 10. Now, we end up getting x plus 3 is equal to plus or minus the root of 10. And what I can do here is I can minus 3 from both sides. That's going to allow me to cancel out the 3 on my left-hand side, leaving me with x equals minus 3 plus or minus the root of 10. So there are two solutions. We have x equals minus 3 plus the root of 10, and we have x equals minus 3 minus the root of 10. So these are my two real or irrational solutions to solving this quadratic equation. Let's do one more question. We'll do x squared minus 10x um, minus 3 equals 0. So what I want to do first, the first step is I want to get rid of my constant term. So I'm going to add 3 to both sides. That cancels it out and I get x squared minus 10x is equal to 3. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find this term here to make this a perfect square. Very easy. All I need to do is I need to find half of this. So minus 10 times a half. That is simply minus 5. And what I need to do with this is I need to square it and stick it up here. So that gives me a value of 25 plus 25. Now, if I'm going to add 25 to the left-hand side, I'm going to have to add 25 to the right-hand side. So we can clean this up and we can say x squared minus 10x plus 25 is equal to 28. Now, remember all along that this is a perfect square. So we can factorize it as x. Remember what half of this was? Minus 5 squared is equal to 28. And now to solve this quadratic, we're going to square root this side, square root this side. Remember, that gives me two solutions. So then I end up cancelling out the square root with the square. x minus 5 is equal to plus or minus the root of 28. And then finally, if I add 5 to both sides, that can cancel out the negative 5 on the left-hand side. And therefore, x is equal to 5 plus or minus the root of 28. So I hope that helped you figure out the geometric proof for completing the square. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.